Hi, welcome to block three of the Sew Along 2018 that we're doing with the New Zealand fabrics. And we're going to have a little bit of fun this time with some applique. So a little bit of a change, we've been doing a lot of piecing. So over here, I've got the first applique block that we're going to do. And this is a traditional uh, Maori style uh, meeting house in New Zealand. Um, its proper name is Afaru Nui, or something close to that. I'm not sure about my pronunciation. Um, often just known as a flurry and it's uh, it is, it's a meeting place it's kind of like a little bit like a, a town hall maybe or place where people can go um, sometimes they sleep there they gather there so it's a gathering place um, so I just thought we'd include that in our New Zealand quilt and so we've got a pattern for doing that a very simplified version I've taken some poetic license they they do seem to traditionally be red um, I, however, I'm going to do a green one as well. We're going to do two of these for the quilt. The, we have the pattern shapes ready for tracing with your fusible web. There were some applique notes in your part one that was just giving you some general information, but I'll go through how I go about it today on this block. So we've already cut some background squares for our applique blocks. That was also in that earlier part. And so we're going to have that that's all ready to go, and I'll get it up the right way. Don't need it just yet. There's going to, I've already traced all my shapes onto my fusible web. I've actually ironed some of them on already, but I just thought we'd go through the whole process so that you can be sure of how I do it. So this is a this particular one I'm using is steamer seam, so it's got paper both sides. Some fusible webs don't have paper both sides. This one does, so I'm just peeling off the back paper, and that's actually quite tacky quite a useful thing when you're just positioning things because you can sit it on without it moving until you're ready to iron it but you can reposition it until you until you iron it then it's permanent so i'm just going to position that on to my fabric i've already done the other ones so as you can see it's, it's going to stay there but it does need to be ironed on so that the glue bonds to the back of the fabric so what this fusible web does is exactly that. It puts glue onto the back side of your fabric. So now I've got all my pieces traced on. I've got to cut them out now. So we just have that rough cut to iron them on, but we actually cut them now with the paper of the fusible web and the fabric at the same time, now right on the line, so that we just can get a nice fine edge on that. The paper that's still being attached helps you get a nice edge as you're cutting. So... Just cut those shapes out nicely so that they're all ready. I don't think you're going to need to watch me show, cut every piece. However, I'm happy for you to watch what I'm doing. Um, so they all need to be cut out now, ready to use. And then we're going to position them, start positioning them and stitching them onto our background square. So we'll go through all that as well. So I'll get all this cutting done. So I've finished cutting all my shapes. They're all ready now for me to start positioning onto my background. So if we look at the block again over here, we can see, and as I said, the pieces are numbered in the pattern so that we know what order to put them down in. Because we kind of want to keep a little bit of perspective going. So the door has got the lintel over the top and it's got these little side bits. They just tuck over the front of the door and, and the roof is behind these posts because that's the way they're built. And so... We just want to keep that perspective as we sew, even though it's a very simplified version, the more perspective you can put into something, then the better it's going to look in the, in the end. So I'm going to position the door on first and I'm actually just going to stitch bit by bit because if I move, if, if I put everything on, you can put everything on. I know some people like to position all their applique and then go to the sewing machine and stitch around it that way. I prefer to, to do it in small bits and then add the next layer and do it that way and build up. And that way, quite often, where you've got the little threads to tie off at the start and finish, you can cover those with the next piece of applique, so you don't have to tie them. So I've got my background square here, all ready to put the applique onto. I'm just going to do a finger press uh, centre line, so just to help me, because this is a symmetrical design and we want it to sit more or less in the middle of their um, background block. So I'm just going to position that. I happen to have on this ironing board some lines, which is quite helpful. And I'm going to peel off the paper backing now from my door piece. So what is what happens now is I've got glue on the back of my fabric piece. So that's going to help me when I position it and iron it in place so that it doesn't move when I do the stitching. 
So I want to position that. I need a little bit of space coming up from the bottom there. And I'm going to position that and I'm going to iron it in place. Once you iron it in place, it's there to stay. So don't iron it till you're ready. And now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and do some applique stitching. But because I'm going to be putting the door lintel over the top of the door, I'm going to start up here and do the three sides. I don't need to go across the top because that'll be covered when I do the little lintel. So now I've got my machine set to do a little blanket stitch. I've got an open toe embroidery type foot on so that I can um, have the, the swing of the needle going, make sure that you haven't got the quarter inch foot or something like that on because it will not be a happy little place. And the other thing, I have shortened the stitch just slightly. It comes in normally at about 2.6, I think, on this machine, and I've got it down to 2.2. Other than that, I think, oh, and the needle down. If you've got an option of having the needle down on your machine so that whenever you stop sewing, the needle is down, that's actually really helpful with applique. Plus, I have got my knee lift in. I'm not using my knee. My knee is not over there. I'm going to use my hand. I find that easier. So I'm just going to start doing the applique. So that's going to do this little blanket stitch. So most of the stitch is going now onto the actual applique shape. So just take it slowly, you don't have to rush this. So a little blanket stitch has a straight line and then it goes to one side. So the straight line should actually sit just off the applique on the background, but right next to the applique. So when we get to the corner, um, we need to stop and turn. So when you're going to turn with applique, always have a needle on the outside edge of the stitch. So not on the applique fabric, but onto the background. And now you need to lift the foot. So I'm going to use my little knee lift and turn it. Now I like to do a little um, 45 degree turn. So it just goes onto the corner there. Then I lift it again. And then I can just continue on the next side. So you can see that having the needle down is very helpful. I'll just do another corner here. So that's my door applique. Looking good, that door. I like it already. And now I've got to put the little lintel on top. So same thing, peel the paper off the back, position it so that you're happy with where it's sitting, and iron it in place. And so at the same time as doing this one, so we don't have to continually stop and start, we can now pop our little uh, steps at the, the bottom, little rail steps, something, whatever they are. And they just overlap onto the edge of the door there, but they're level with the door. Because that's kind of ground level. So just keeping a straight line there, putting that on. And we're ready now to go to, back to the machine and sew. So I'm going to stitch along uh, starting from here because this end is going to be covered. So I don't need to come right up that end. I'm going to stitch all the way around there. I'm going to do the same on this one. On the lintel, we're just going to go all the way around it and join back up again. Um, so that uh, the stitching is all joined up on that one. But these other bits, we don't need to cover the ends, or do the, worry about the ends because they're going to be covered. So the corners on these are not absolutely sharp like they were on the door. So we'll just go around the corner and just take it slowly. You don't need to rush with any of this. All, remember, always stop when you're turning corners with the needle off the applique on the background side of things. And then just lift, have your needle down, lift and turn, even if you have to turn every stitch. It's 
always a good thing to try and have that blanket stitch um, perpendicular or straight in from the edge. So if the edge is on an angle, the stitch should go in straight from that angle. That, I don't know if you can understand all that. Hopefully you can. along my curvy top of my lintel and I'm going to have to keep stopping turning the fabric quite often so that I get the curve that I want following that edge. So the good thing about taking your time and turning it is that you don't have to rush. There's no need to rush. Um, I know that we sit there thinking, oh, I could just probably maneuver that fabric around. And yes, you probably could, but it would make things go a little bit bunchy. It might make things skew a little bit and not sit so nicely. I think it's worth taking the time to just Move it every stitch if you need to, and you get a nice little hollowed edge. It sits nice and flat. What more could you want? And I'm nearly back to where I started now, so I'm just going to overlap just a couple of stitches, and that's it. That's the lintel done, so things are looking good. We're doing pretty well so far. We've got a whole door. That's not bad. So now we need to put on um, the roof actually goes on next for positioning purposes. We just need to have a look at it with the side posts so that we can make sure it's going to be in the right position. So I'm just going to take the back of the roof. And again, we did that finger press so we know where the center sits more or less. And we'll just have to adjust the height according to these side posts. So these will just overlap over there and sit up but that roof is too low it needs to come up higher whoops it's sticky so it's sticking to me and so these posts sit up beyond the roof a little bit something like that and like that so that's all looking pretty good the roof could probably just come across a touch it's slightly to one side and we don't really want it flopping off the block so I think that's looking pretty good. I'm going to iron that in place. And now I can go ahead and I can stitch the roof in place. And my starting and stopping point is going to be behind at the center here because there's going to be um, this little shape up the top here. So traditionally, this would be some sort of um, part of the carving. It might be a figure. It might be some other more ornamental thing. Um, so we're just going with a fairly relatively simple shape here. Um, which goes on after I've done the stitching. So I can stop and start underneath at that central point there. And then we're going to come back and put that carving piece and the side posts on as well. So I'll go ahead and start on my curves, much the same as we've been doing. the roof 
I've got to put my little side posts on here, so I'm just going to position those coming up here like that, and one up the other side. And my very elaborate carving at the top here, which is really a very simplified shape. Fairly tight for applique purposes though, um, but I think we can manage it fine. So I'm going to iron all that on. And that's looking pretty good. So I've just got to go back to the machine now to do my posts and my little carving at the top here. So I might start with my little carving. It's quite a tight little um, curve that it's got going on. And I'm just going to start doing a little bit of applique here. We've got to go all the way around this shape. So a fairly tight little curve here. my block um, you could do a straight line up the center if you wanted to to indicate a, like a divide in the doorway or not um, I'm pretty pleased with the way that's come up so now I've got my two blocks done because we're making two of everything and I have taken the poetic license and done a green one but however I'm very pleased with my two little furry and I hope that they're going to sit nicely in my quilt so thank you that was block three and we'll see you again for block four